Hey guys, it's Chris from Highline Guitars and you're watching another episode of From the Luthiers Workbench. In this episode, I'm going to invite you along as I assemble a Highline Guitars humbucker pickup. And I'm going to show you everything from start to finish. And we're going to start right now. So these are all the parts that go into making a humbucker pickup from right to left. In that upper corner, I have four lead wires and two plastic bobbins. I use four conductor shielded wire to hook up my pickups. Uh, nickel silver base plate. I'm using an Alnico 5 magnet. Then I've got a couple of different spacers. And then these are Philister pole pieces for the adjustable side. And then slugs. Then I use four brass screws to attach the bobbins to the base plate. First thing I have to do is prep some of the parts, and that includes filing off some of the casting flash on the plastic bobbins with a fine tooth file. Next, I'll strip about a quarter of an inch off of each end of the 28 gauge lead wires that I use to wire up the bobbins. There are four lead wires in each pickup. To ensure a good connection, I'll pre-tin the ends with solder. For solder, I'm using 60%, 10-40% lead solder to get a good, reliable connection. The hookup wire I use is shielded four conductor wire. And as I remove the foil shield here, you can see the, the four color coded wires. And there's also a fifth bare wire, which is in contact with that foil shield and helps ground it to reduce noise. To prepare the conductors, I'm going to strip off a quarter of an inch of the insulation from the end of each of the color coded wires. Then I'll tin them up as I did my lead wires earlier. To keep the pickups as quiet as possible, I need to ground the base plate. And to do that, I'm going to solder that short length of bare wire where it extends out of the end of my lead. And the other end will be soldered to the ground pin on the jack in the control cavity. And here I'm threading the lead through the large hole in the corner of the base plate. It's important to keep in mind where that wire emerges from the bottom of the base plate. It has to be as close to where it's going to be routed to the control cavity. Now I'm ready to wind the bobbins, and to do that, I have to first apply some double-sided sticky tape to the back of the bobbins so I can attach it to my winder. Every winder is a little bit different, and with mine, I just run the start of the wire through the uh, winder disc to the backside and tape it down. Then I'll do the first couple of turns by hand just to make sure everything is lining up properly. Winding the bobbins does a lot to determine what kind of tone and the signal strength that you're going to get out of your pickups. There's a lot of variables involved and I think that the, probably the most important ones to consider is the gauge of the wire that you're going to use, the kind of insulation on the wire, and how many turns you're going to put on a bobbin. Now speaking of wire, I could probably do a whole series of videos that would last for hours and hours and hours talking about the different nuances of pickup design with regards to wire, magnets, and that sort of thing. But instead, I think for this video, I'm just going to give you some rules of thumb that I typically follow. I use uh, 42, 43, and 44 gauge wire, and I'll use uh, heavy form var. Uh, real enamel or uh, poly insulation. It just depends on what I'm after. When it comes to choosing the wire gauge for a particular pickup, I just follow uh, some basic rules of thumb and that is the higher the number in terms of the gauge, the thinner the wire. The thinner the wire, the more turns you can put on a bobbin. The more turns you can put on a bobbin, the stronger the output signal. The stronger the output signal, the more likely you're going to clip some of your treble frequencies. And that's why pickups that have a fewer number of turns and a lower output signal generally sound more balanced and articulate. After I finish winding the bobbin, I'll tape off the finish and then remove the bobbin from the winder. Now 
Now, another factor to consider when deciding how many turns to put on a pickup bobbin is the position of the pickup. If a pickup is going to be in the neck position, it's going to sound different than the pickup in the bridge position. And this has to do with the amplitude of the string's vibration. The neck pickup is closer to the center of the scale. And at that position, the strings have a greater amplitude of vibration, which increases the output signal from the pickup. The pickup that's in the bridge position, however, is at the end of the scale where the strings are not vibrating with as great an amplitude as they are towards the neck. But they are vibrating with a higher frequency. Therefore, your bridge pickup sounds a lot brighter than the neck pickup. And there's also a potential for the, there to be a difference in volume if both pickups had the same exact number of turns on both. So what we tend to do is we try to calibrate or match the, the bridge and the neck pickups by varying the winds uh, or the number of turns on each bobbin for those two pickups. And what you often see is a neck pickup has a fewer number of turns on each bobbin than the bridge. We can do that because the bridge pickup, because as I mentioned before, when you increase the number of turns and therefore boost the signal strength, you start to lose some of your treble frequencies. Well, since the bridge is already going to have higher uh, treble frequencies by virtue of the fact that it's at the end of the scale length, you can increase the number of turns on the bridge pickup, boost the signal, and that's going to take down some of the treble frequencies and help you to balance the tone of that pickup and the volume more with the, the neck pickup. And it's just a simple way that, that you can um, deal with concerns that you or, or customers might have that a bridge pickup might sound too bright. And if that's the case, um, and unfortunately it's something you really can only learn through experience, but you can, re you can increase the number of turns on that bridge pickup and then reduce the number of turns on the neck pickup and get a better balance of tone and volume. To make it easier to solder the four conductor hookup wire to the bobbins, I have to solder lead wires to each end of the coil. So to the start of the coil, I'm going to be soldering a 28 gauge black lead wire, and then to the finish I'm soldering a 28 gauge red wire. I'll wrap a short length of the coil wire around the stripped and tinned end of the lead and then just touch it with a little bit of solder. Then I'll just slip a short section of 1 16th inch diameter heat shrink tubing over that solder joint and shrink it with my soldering iron. With the start and finish leads soldered into place, I wound up uh, that last bit of wire and then taped the leads so that both the start and finish lead wires are extending off of the same end of the bobbin. And then to add a little bit of extra protection for the coil, I wrapped it up in some Teflon plumber's tape. To install the slugs into the slug bobbin, I installed them from the back and pressed them into place with a screwdriver. The adjustable poles are installed using an electric screwdriver. The metal spacer is then installed on the ends of the adjustable pole pieces. Another critical factor in achieving the right kind of tone with your pickups is getting the magnets just right. There are a lot of different magnets out there and just because you have a certain magnet doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get the tone that you would expect. What you have to do is you have to be able to measure the gauze and then adjust it accordingly to get the right kind of tone. So here I'm using my own homemade 
DIY uh, gauze meter. It's a Hall Effects type uh, sensor which is wired into a multimeter and I can read the voltage and then take that voltage and plug it into a spreadsheet which crunches a number and tells me what the gauze is and then I can adjust that gauze using different techniques in order to tailor the magnets to my specific needs. Now I'm ready for the final assembly of the pickups and that means installing the bobbins with the magnets and the way I do this is I always have the um, screw bobbins are my south pole uh, orientation and that means that the south pole will always be either against the fretboard or against the bridge and then uh, the bobbins are installed just by using those tiny little brass screws. Probably the most tedious part of assembling the pickup is attaching the uh, four conductor leads to the bobbin leads. It's all very tiny and fiddly work to do. And then each of the leads is soldered together. Here I'm showing uh, two of those leads being soldered together. The other two have been uh, already finished. Then I'll install uh, some uh, 16th inch diameter heat shrink tubing to protect the solder joints and to prevent shorts and then I'll just uh, shrink them up with my soldering iron. Then I'll tuck everything out of place in between the two bobbins so you can't see the wiring. Now one of the last steps in making the pickups is an optional step and it's the sort of thing that's it, it isn't absolutely necessary but uh, people have come to expect it and that's to dip the uh, pickups into melted paraffin wax and this is a technique that I think was introduced about 700 years ago by Eddie Van Halen and now people seem to think that it's absolutely necessary but you know some of the greatest pickups ever made didn't have any wax in them so um, I do it just because it's expected. In a nod to tradition I'll wrap the uh, humbucker bobbins with uh, cloth humbucker tape. So there you have it, everything that I go through to make a humbucker pickup. And I know you're probably wondering, what is the advantage of making your own pickup when you can buy them off the shelf? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, once you get everything set up, it's cost effective and you can make humbucker pickups, well, any kind of pickup, P90s, single coils, whatever. You can make them fairly inexpensively. And so uh, it actually becomes a uh, a cost-cutting measure. But the best part about it is it gives you the ability to uh, shape the tone of the musical instrument that you're building with your own hands. So when you're done you can say not only did I cut, carve, and sand that but I made the pickups that went in it as well. So that's pretty much uh, my reasoning and my thought process behind it. So until the next episode, take care and we will see you soon.